Hello everyone and welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk e-commerce module library overview. My name is Evan and I'll be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this web conference through Teams Live events and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. Today's web conference is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation and by participating in the session using Microsoft Teams, your name, email address, phone number, and or title may be viewable by other session participants. If you do not consent to being a part of a recorded session, please disconnect at this time. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout the event. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Now let's get started. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Anupama Raju, Principal Program Manager. Anupama, over to you. Thank you, Evan, for the introduction. Uh, so today, as uh, Evan mentioned, I'm going to be giving uh, an overview on the e-commerce module library. And um, to introduce myself again, I'm Anupama Raju and I'm a principal program manager in Dynamics 365 Commerce. So the agenda for today is going to be, uh, I'm going to give you an introduction on uh, two modules, and then we're going to talk about how to configure a module on a page, on an e-commerce page. And then we're going to have a quick demo and then come back and talk more about uh, the module library and the types of modules that are available for use. So let's start with an introduction. So in order to understand the big picture, I'm going to start with the commerce architecture. Um, so let's have a, a high level overview of co commerce architecture and see how and where module library fits into this uh, equation. So uh, commerce architecture, I think many of you are familiar. We have headquarters, which is where all the products, pricing, uh, discounts, inventory, etc. are configured. Uh, so this is this one place where all your information for your channels are getting powered from. And then you have the commerce runtime, which is basically the commerce engine and the API engine. And this is the one place where uh, it, it serves as your central point of integration uh, for all your uh, business, for all the business logic across uh, commerce. And uh, it powers up all the channels from POS to uh, e-commerce. On the e-commerce side, we have a site builder. Now site builder is where we uh, create uh, your e-commerce pages, uh, and we will be talking about site builder and I'll be showing you a demo on site builder as well. And then we have the content management system. Uh, this is where all the assets used in your e-commerce site will be stored uh, along with the pages and templates that we've created for your site. Now, um, uh, uh, CMS is basically an Azure blob storage where all this information is getting stored and retrieved. And then we have the most interesting piece, the web storefront. Uh, this is the uh, customer facing e-commerce uh, website rendering engine. Now this is the piece of um, uh, this is the piece that we're going to be focusing for the rest of this discussion. So as I mentioned, Web Storefront, it's the customer facing website rendering system. It's the actual rendering engine that powers your e-commerce uh, site, your pages, and it includes a module library, which is a collection of modules that provide a rich set of out of box capabilities. As an example, a promotion banner can be used to uh, show some promotion on the home page. Uh, cart displays the cart line items in your shopping bag. Uh, video player is used to render a video on a home page or any other page. So these are examples of modules and we'll be discussing more modules through the rest of this uh, uh, discussion. And uh, here is an example of a Fabricam homepage. Uh, Fabricam is an e-commerce, uh, is a demo uh, environment that we have to showcase our uh, e-commerce capabilities. Now, if you look at the uh, homepage top down, uh, you can see it's a collection of multiple modules. We have the cookie compliance module followed by promo banner. We have a header, navigation menu, uh, content block in a carousel, text block, etc. So really you want to think of modules as building blocks of a page. And modules are built on React framework and it uses a combination of server side and client side rendering to deliver responsive web experiences. Every module in the module library has a specific intent. Uh, in other words, it has some 
predefined business logic that it ships with. Uh, this intent could be uh, something as simple as render an image, or it could be something like render product information. And it depends and varies depending on the module that you're uh, that you're uh, that you want to use on your page. So in addition to uh, an intent, modules also have um, an appearance. They appear a certain way when you add them to your e-commerce page, and this appearance comes from what we call as theme. So in the previous example, the Fabricam demo site that I showed you, uh, the theme that we have enabled there is the Fabricam theme. So the Fabricam theme automatically gives a certain look and feel to all the modules that are part of that theme. And I also want to call out that modules are highly customizable and they deliver a scalable solution for online businesses. Now there is a separate session around uh, commerce extensibility. I highly recommend that session. Uh, there'll be a lot more discussion around uh, how modules can be extended and how you can achieve some of your uh, customizations. So now that we have a basic understanding of what is a module, uh, in the next section we're going to talk about how do you actually configure a module on a page. Now to begin with, um, I want to start off from, um, you know, this is a home page um, configuration on Site Builder. And I want to talk about a few important things because I'm going to be using this terminology throughout the rest of this uh, discussion. So here is our home page uh, on Site Builder, and then the leftmost pane is your page outline. And your page outline kind of shows all the modules that are configured in this page, like your entire tree view is accessible from the page outline. Then right in the middle, we have the VisiWick canvas. Now the canvas is where you can um, preview your content as you're adding um, you know, modules or adding content in your uh, modules. Um, you can also add modules directly from your VisiWick canvas. And then the other interesting piece is the property panel. Uh, the property panel allows you to um, add, remove, um, sorry, to configure data or to configure properties. And we're going to be talking a lot more about how to do that in the next few slides. So modules can be, so where do modules get uh, data from? Uh, modules can be configured with data within the site builder property panel. So an example is on the home page content block. You can configure it with a heading, a paragraph, an image, a link. All of the data can flow, uh, can be configured for this module within Site Builder. But there are also modules that can be data driven by data actions. Uh, and data action is basically a JavaScript function that fetches and maps data using the Commerce API engine. And an example is the buy box on the product details page where it shows product information. And all it's doing is calling into the data action, which, which then calls into the Commerce API engine to retrieve the, uh, the product information. A little side, quick sidebar on data actions. Um, so data actions, um, I, I mentioned call into a, your commerce API engine, uh, but they also offer improved performance. Uh, they have a bunch of uh, additional capabilities that allow them to do that. Uh, one is they allow you, uh, they enable state sharing scenarios. Um, they minimize the number of external requests that your application requires. They provide automatic deduplication, uh, so making sure that multiple data action calls aren't duplicated. Um, so it's definitely uh, a more uh, performant when you're going through your data action calls. And out of box, we have a core set of data actions that are provided. Uh, but again, just like any other piece in commerce, your data actions are also highly customizable. Coming back to modules, um, so module properties. We talked about the property panel when we talked about how data can be configured in the property panel. In addition to data, modules can also have certain properties that can be configured in the module property panel. These properties allow a site author to opt into features. An example here is on the image gallery module, we have image zoom where you can say, hey, I want inline zoom or I want container zoom. Uh, you can define the zoom factor. You can say I want 2x zoom, 3x zoom, 10x zoom, full screen, etc. So every module ships with um, a collection of uh, properties. Uh, I recommend you refer to the module documentation to learn more about what properties are available. Um, another uh, quick tip that I also wanted to call out is if a module is being reused across multiple pages uh, and it's going to be reused with the same set of properties, uh, it's recommended to build it out as a page fragment. Um, and I will talk more about page fragments when we're doing the demo. Um, 
And then another piece around uh, modules is uh, the site settings extensions. So when you go to site builder uh, and you go under site settings extensions, you will see a variety of uh, properties that are available here. So these are additional configurations that your modules can use. And uh, the way they are different from a module property is that site settings determine a workflow for the entire site. For example, inventory settings. Um, inventory settings shown here, they allow you to turn on inventory check for your e-commerce site. Um, they tell you like, hey, what uh, value should I use for inventory check? Should I use total available or available physical? What ranges of inventory should I display? Should I display um, in stock, out of stock, low stock, all ranges or only show out of stock? Um, so all these different configurations can be configured in one place and uh, can be leveraged across your entire site. And typically, if there is something is defined as an inventory setting, it's going to be leveraged across multiple modules. Uh, for example, inventory management settings will be used by your buy box, cart, checkout, wish list, and other modules. The site settings are uh, defined in uh, app settings.json. And uh, another quick tip with app settings or JSON, uh, when, uh, when you're updating to the latest module library package, you must also make sure that you merge the app settings or JSON file for the respective release so you get the latest settings uh, as you update your, uh, your new releases. So with that, I'm going to quickly break for a demo and kind of walk you through some um, topics that we just discussed. So this is my Fabricam uh, product details page. And you can see the product details page um, has a header, has a breadcrumb, kind of helps you navigate back to uh, the, 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 the product category. Uh, it has a media gallery. Uh, it has the buy box, which shows the product information. You can choose your dimensions, add to bag. And it also has the store uh, picker module, also called the store selector. And uh, it has product specifications and some recommendations through related products and the reviews module. Now let's see how this page is actually configured in Site Builder. So this is your Site Builder for my Fabricam site and um, some basics about building a page or a, a, any page on, e on a Site Builder. All pages begin with a template. So your template is a definition that tells you here are the allowed set of modules on um, any page that is inherited from this template. So you have to first start with a template. So in the case of product details, we have a, a product details template. And let's see what is actually defined in this template. So in the product details template, um, I'll walk you through the entire structure. So there is a HTML head. Uh, the head is typically used for uh, any HTML uh, modules, um, uh, such as sorry, HTML head modules, such as the page summary metadata, uh, page summary modules, which are used for ca uh, SEO optimization. Uh, we have common meta tags, which are like modules that are used for uh, outputting any HTML on your page. Uh, there are script injection uh, modules that are available. So there is some restricted set of modules that you can use on your HTML head that is available as part of the module library. Then there is a body begin and there is a body end. Again, the body begin and body end only allow certain set of modules. Uh, we allow this, um, the script injection modules on these two um, uh, slots of the page. And at any time, if you want to see what is allowed, you can just say edit and then you can do an add module and then it shows you a module picker where you can quickly get an overview of what is available in each of these slots. Now, the actual section of the page that is visible on your e-commerce site uh, is within the body. And this is where you can actually see the page uh, appears. And then the page itself has multiple slots. It has a header, subheader, main slot, subfooter, and footer slot. Now, you don't have to configure all the slots, but um, typically we, we configure the header in the header slot, the page header. And then um, on the main slot is where all the main content of the uh, mod uh, page goes in. And then the footer slot is where uh, you can add your page footer. Now you can certainly use the subheader for maybe use showcasing a promotion banner or you can use any, any other module. But in this example, we've used the header slot, main slot and the footer slot. Now let's examine the um, main slot. 
So you can see that uh, there are multiple containers that are defined within this um, main slot. There's a buy box container. There is a product specification container. Um, and later in the discussion, I will explain containers and why we want to use containers. Uh, but uh, for now, there is a container and within that container, we've added the buy box module and all the other modules that are hosted within that buy box, um, the media gallery, store selector, social share, etc. And then uh, if you go into each of these container sections, you can see that it has a, a set of modules defined within each of these sections. So product specification has product details. Um, we also have a spacer module that allows you to define spacing between uh, every section. Um, and then there is related products where you have product collection uh, people also like. And then we have one module which is called the Enrich container that has no restrictions. We have not added any modules here, so it means that you can add anything you want when you're creating your page. So this is a quick overview of the page outline. You can see how the modules have been added here. Now on the template, uh, so, uh, on the property panel, uh, you can also see a bunch of property. All the properties of the module are also exposed here. Um, let me go to um, Media Gallery, for instance, so you can see all the Media Gallery properties here. Um, you don't have to configure all the properties in the template, but you can if you want to. And it also certain properties can be cre uh, can be configured here and locked, meaning once it's defined in the template, any page that is created off of this template will automatically get this uh, property with that configuration. But we've just kept it open for now. Uh, you don't really have to define those restrictions unless it's absolutely needed. Uh, but I do want to draw your attention to uh, the min occurs and max occurs. So this kind of defines how many occurrences of this module are allowed on uh, the actual page that is built out of this template. Now you don't have to define a minimum or a maximum, but in this case I've defined the min occurrence as one um, because it is a product details page and by default I do want it to have a buy box like without a buy box. It doesn't make any sense to have a product details page, um, so it makes sense in some cases to really define the min occurrence as one. So when you create a page, you automatically have at least one instance of the buy box, one instance of the media gallery, etc. It also helps if you're doing uh, page customization. So when you're creating uh, enriching a, a certain page, having a min occurs of one will make sure your enriched page also inherits those properties automatically. So we've talked a lot about the template and uh, the template structure. Now let's just switch back to pages. Um, let's examine the actual page that is created off of this template. So uh, since I've already created this page, it's, it's prompting me and asking me for um, a product that I want to preview uh, the page with. So I've selected the shoes and um, black leather Oxford shoes, so it should automatically show me a preview in my Visivic canvas. And um, now, so coming back to the, uh, the page, you can see the page here. Uh, uh, you do not see the HTML head and the, uh, some of the other slots that we saw in template. Um, your page is always going to start from the main slot which and show you the default page and all the content. So this is the actual section that is visible on your page. And then you can also on the property panel, you can quickly get an overview of the template that is being used, uh, the URL for the page, etc. Now on the header slot, as, as I mentioned earlier, we have the header container which is built out as a fragment and I will explain that in a minute. And uh, on the main slot, we have all the modules that we discussed earlier can, uh, added. And um, you can see by box, since it's min occurrence of one, it automatically appears in my page. I don't have to go click here and say add module. It, when I create the page, it's automatically there. And you can also see that in my page, I have configured all the different properties, uh, defined the zoom, zoom factor, thumbnail orientation, etc. So those are some basics of creating um, a template and creating a page. And once you're done, you want to just say finish editing and publish. And if you're doing it for the first time, you want to make sure your URL is also published. Uh, but with that, I want to also kind of switch gears and explain a little bit about um, the header fragment. So uh, fragments are uh, reusable sections of the page. 
um, they, they are fully configured and they can be reused across any page or any template that you want. Uh, a great example is a header. Now, if you look at the header of a e-commerce site, the header does not necessarily change when you navigate from one page to another. So the easiest way to configure the header is to create a fragment, uh, configure all the data for the fragment in one place, and then add it to your templates. Like you can add it to all the templates that you've created, your marketing templates, your product details page template, your category template, uh, cart, checkout, all the templates that you have, you can create, you can add that fragment. So it is just created once. And the advantage of a fragment is uh, if you ever make a change to a fragment, all the pages that use that fragment will automatically get the change. And in this demo, we're going to see how that's going to, um, uh, how we, how that is going to happen. So I have a header uh, fragment. And within the header fragment, you can see I have multiple modules configured. Um, I have again, I start with a container and then within the container, I have the cookie compliance modules. It kind of shows you that cookie banner and then a promotion banner, which is this. And then the actual header module, which also hosts a bunch of other modules within that, um, such as navigation menu, search, cart icons, se site selector, site picker, etc. And uh, for this demo, what I'm going to do is um, if you look at my uh, site, it has two promo banner messages. I'm going to add a third message. So let's do edit. Add message. And I'm going to say winter sale and I'm going to add a link. I'm going to say. And I can. Point the link to a custom page, a custom URL, a product, a category, anything I want. Um, in this case, I'm just going to say winter sale men's shoes. And uh, ARIA labels, um, ARIA labels are super important from an accessibility st standpoint. So anytime you're defining a link, make sure you also provide a, 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 a descriptive ARIA label. So I'm done, I'm going to say OK. And um, I'm going to finish editing. I can put in a message saying that uh, added promo banner message and then OK. And I'm going to publish my change. Now you'll see that I actually made the change to the fragment. I did not touch the PDP page or the PDP template, but let's go to the page and refresh the page. And uh, the banner messages appear through a, are, are, are going to cycle through all the different messages. So you saw the first message, which was summer collection, uh, the second message, which is buy two, and then the third one, winter sale. So uh, fragments are a great way for you to like, um, you know, define modules, configured, pre-configured modules when you want to reuse them across your site. So with that demo, I'm going to go back and um, switch back to my deck. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the module library and the modules that are available in the module library. So module library, there are about 80 plus modules available in the module library. Now these can be broadly classified based on their usage as container, marketing, header, footer, product browse, product details, etc. Really, uh, the classification here is based on the intended the intended usage or uh, the pages that they're being used, etc. Just to kind of give you an overview of the different modules that we uh, that we ship out of box. Now let's walk through each of these different modules that we support containers. Now through the convert through my demo, I, I mentioned containers multiple times and I always said, oh, you always start with a container and you add your modules to a container. Now what is a container? A container as a name uh, goes, it's just a module that hosts other modules inside it, but it is important in the sense that it defines the layout of the module that it contains. So for instance, if you have a container and you add two modules inside that container, you can define how these two modules should appear within that container. Should they appear side by side, um, you know, in a two column, three column, four column view, or should they just stack one below the other, each other? All these different kind of properties are kind of can be defined through the container module. 
And then the container also uh, helps you define how the module should uh, be laid out on the page. Should they go full bleed on the screen or should they always maintain a gutter? So they have a lot of layout driven properties that come as part of a container. So you never want to really go add a module directly onto the page. You always want to start with a container and start adding modules into that container. And it's also a nice way to kind of uh, create sections in your page. So you know, um, you know, when we looked at the product details page, we saw there is a buy box container which kind of hosts all the modules that are related to buy box. So it kind of gives you that separation in terms of it's a section. And then there is a, a ratings and reviews section which kind of hosts all the ratings and reviews modules. Um, so it's kind of a neat way to kind of define how you want to uh, lay out your page as well. And uh, there are three uh, container modules that we support. There is container, uh, container with two column and container with three column. Uh, and here is an example of uh, a store locations page um, that we have in Fabricam. Uh, the page basically shows all available stores and um, also shows uh, the stores in a map view. So the way this page is built out is uh, there are actually two separate modules. There is a store selector module which appears on the left and there is a map module that appears on the right. Uh, this is hosted within a container with two columns. And uh, when you add these two modules to the container, you're also saying the width should be set to 33% and 67% for desktop view for this container. So that way what happens is that the first module in that container automatically gets 33% width and the second module in the container uh, gets the 67 width. 67% width and uh, uh, container modules such as container with two column and container with three column. Uh, they have uh, multiple layouts supported uh, on a viewport by viewport basis. Um, so if you definitely know you're going to do only two column or three column, which is fairly common, uh, you can use these containers and you can have different uh, widths based on uh, desktop, tablet, mobile, etc. And you can also achieve multi-column using the default container module. Um, it's just that it, it, you, you don't have this additional capability of setting the width. They all uh, space out equally in that in that in those containers, in the other container. So the next section we're going to talk about is the marketing module. Uh, market these are modules that allow you to show promotional or marketing content. Uh, these are modules that can be uh, configured within Site Builder, so they're kind of standalone modules. They just you can configure a heading, paragraph, link, images, uh, video. Uh, all the content can be fully programmed within uh, Site Builder, and they can be used on any page and um, typically on home page and marketing pages, but they can also be used for storytelling content on a PDP or a category page or a search page, etc. And examples of marketing modules, we have a uh, content block, text block, carousel, video player, promo banner, iframe, accordion, tab, etc. Header and footer, we talked uh, a lot about header. Uh, so the modules uh, that define the header on the footer of the page are part of the header and footer module uh, classification. Um, header, we talked about all the different modules that are supported. We actually saw the demo. Um, typically, uh, as I mentioned earlier, both header and footer are configured as a, a page fragment. And here are the list of modules that are supported on the header and footer. You have header, navigation menu, search, site selector, notifications, mini cart, and the footer as footer, footer category, and footer category items. Uh, so basically, footer is a bunch of links, and then you can define these categories, and each of those categories can have links within them. And there are also images supported here. So if you want to achieve something like follow us and you want to put a, a, an icon to a social media platform, you can do that through the footer um, module. I've also called out breadcrumb. Uh, breadcrumb can be part of your header or it can be actually part of the main body in your uh, in your page. But header is or breadcrumb also allows you to do that secondary site navigation and can be part of your header if you want to. Uh, so now that we talked about uh, marketing pages uh, and uh, you know how do you um, uh, containers, the next most important uh, piece is how do you actually browse a set of products? So there are two main modules that we support for browsing. Uh, 
Uh, the first one is the search results module. Uh, search results module is used on list pages. So any result from a search, uh, search result, any result from a search or a category browsing will appear on the list page and uh, it will be powered by the search results module. And the search result module also includes refiners so you can further refine the, your results and find the product that you want. Another module that we also support for showcasing a list of products is product collection. Now product collection typically displays a list of uh, products and it's powered by a data source and the data source can be a recommendation list, a curated list or a, you know any any list that we support in commerce is powered by the product collection module and product collection can be used on any page like on your home page. You can have trending picks for you, uh, best selling. Um, on your PDP, you can have people also like related, uh, similar, etc. And here are some examples. So here is a search results module uh, which is showing search results for dress and then we have product collection module that is showing um, the picks for you uh, list that is supported by commerce. The next is product details page. Uh, we actually walked through the product details page uh, in our demo. Um, so all the pay modules that are, that are allowed on a product details page, um, you have a buy box, which is the most important module where all the product information, price and the add to bag actions are supported. Other modules such as media gallery, social share, uh, store selector, text block are also supported on the buy box. Um, buy box allows you to add to bag for shipping or you can also do the pickup in store using the store selector module and buy box also leverages several site settings such as order quantity, inventory, add to cart, etc. And um, here are all the different modules that we just talked about. Um, I think I, meant, I mentioned most of them, but we also have reviews, ratings, histogram, writer review. Um, in, in, in addition to these modules, uh, any marketing module can also be used on a product details page. Uh, product collection module can also be used on a product details page. It's not unique to uh, a PDP, so it can be used here. But this is these are the most important. These are the modules that are kind of tied to uh, a PDP by default. The next is find in store. Uh, so this in today's time, um, buy online pickup in store is super important and uh, you can achieve this using the store selector module. Uh, the store selector module serves two purposes. Uh, in a standalone mode, it can just show you the list of stores that are associated with your online channel. And then when it's associated in context of a product, it can show you here are all the stores, here are the pickup options that are available in the store, and it actually allows you to add a product to bag uh, with a pickup option. Uh, it also we also have pro uh, provide integration uh, with uh, with a map which is powered by Bing Maps. And uh, the find and store modules can be used in buy box, cart, header, and they can also be standalone like in, a, in a store locations page. Now, um, the, the entire buy online pickup in store, um, uh, this experience is uh, deeply integrated with the Bing Maps REST APIs. Uh, we use the geocoding API, auto suggest API. We use the Bing Maps V8 uh, control for the Maps module. Now to enable this feature, you need to make sure that in commerce, uh, in headquarters, commerce parameters, your Bing Maps feature is enabled and you also need to provide a Bing Maps API key for uh, the feature to work end to end. And here are some examples. You can see the store location page. You can also see the buy now pick up in a store where you, you have uh, you're looking for a product and it tells you that it's found in. Uh, we found four stores within 50 miles of you and allows you to um, you know pick up um, from that particular store. And there's also a checkout pickup information module which is used in checkout. Uh, this module is um, allows you to enter any pickup related information. Um, that is required for uh, picking up your order. For example, time slots. If you if your order needs to be picked up within a certain time slot and the San Francisco store supports those time slots, then that information can be captured using the checkout pickup information module. Shopping bag. Uh, shopping bag displays items added to shopping bag by the user. 
Uh, there are two main shopping bag modules. One is the cart and then the other is a mini cart. Um, again, as the name goes, mini cart is like a minimal minimalized version, a minimalistic version of the cart uh, with, with minimal operations kind of used mainly to give you a summary of what is available in the cart. And the cart basically displays all your cart line items. It also allows you to apply codes. Uh, it has a bunch of additional uh, features such as you can uh, add a store selector module to your cart and you can choose between shipping and pick up in store. You can add to wish list. You can remove an item from a cart. You can change quantity. All the stuff that is uh, you know, supported by uh, a typical shopping bag will be available through the cart module. And similar to buy box, cart also leverages several site settings such as order quantity, inventory, uh, etc. So here's an example of cart and mini cart. And as you can see, mini cart is a quick summary of your items in shopping bag. And the summary appears uh, when you hover over the cart icon on or the shopping bag icon on your header. Um, cart, on the other hand, is your full detailed view of your items in shopping bag. And uh, you can see items are grouped by uh, the mode of delivery. You can change a store. You can change the mode of uh, pickup. You can change your um, quantity. Um, your cart also allows you to enter any coupon codes that are available that can be applied to your order. And then the next section is checkout modules. Um, checkout modules allow user to check out and place an order. So as part of checkout, there is multiple. Uh, there is a ton of information that we need to collect. This could be all the way from shipping related information, pickup information, contact info, payment, etc. So each of these are broken down into separate modules. Um, and I also wanted to call out that um, you know we. Uh, in the case of checkout, header, buy box, you, you, you've seen examples where there is one, make, one module called checkout or buy box, and then within that module, there are several other smaller modules that we are adding to it. And the reason for doing that is um, one, uh, some of these modules could be reused in other uh, pages. For example, store selector is used on the buy box as well as on the cart. Another reason is we want to make sure our modules are not so heavy on business logic that if you want to make a small change as a customization uh, to meet your customer requirements, uh, you don't have to completely customize the entire module. You can just customize smaller sections and pieces of that, uh, that, that module. So you've kind of given it some kind of uh, granularity, uh, logical granularity, so it, it is easier to do customizations and also allows you to reuse these modules across the site. Now, um, payment um, module, um, uh, let me show you some screenshots first. So here are all the different uh, checkout modules that are available. Um, so you can see shipping address, delivery options, pickup information, payment, uh, gift card, gift card balance check, loyalty, terms and conditions, contact, order confirmation. Uh, all these modules are available as part of checkout. I kind of want to draw your attention to the payment uh, section here. So within payment, you can see that we have out of box. We have support for uh, loyalty, uh, Dynamics 365 Commerce loyalty, and then we have gift card support, both internal and external gift cards such as SVS and GiveX. So if you want to redeem a gift card, you can uh, provide a gift card pin expiration date. There is also a gift card balance check module. So if you want to use a balance check module on a marketing page um, or in a gift card PDP, you can certainly do that. And uh, the credit, uh, the, the payment um, is all, we also support payment through RDN um, payment connector. And we also recently added support for PayPal through PayPal payment connector. So these are the different uh, payment options that are available. Um, and uh, all the different modules that are available for checkout. And uh, sign. the next piece that we're going to talk about is sign up. Now, uh, there are the, if you have an e-commerce site, you can do a guest checkout or you can sign in as a user and you can do a signed in experience where, you know, once you're signed in, you can um, shop across devices seamlessly. Uh, you can shop in your mobile device, go to your desktop device, log in and place the order. Um, so certainly um, we do support that and uh, it requires uh, the AD B2C uh, tenant to be set up. And there was another session uh, covering the B2C setup, and I recommend that you take a look at the uh, resources posted in the end of this deck for more information. 
there are four modules that we support for sign in sign up experience sign in sign up password reset and password reset verification uh, in addition to signing up for an account, we also allow you to sign up for loyalty uh, rewards, and this is done using the loyalty sign up module. Account management. So once you have an account, um, you want to go into your account and you want to be able to manage your uh, user information as well as the order related information. Uh, so this can be achieved using the account management modules. Um, so account management is a series of uh, pages. You have the account management homepage, which is like your entry point to all these different pages, and each experience is powered as a separate page. Um, you can see that uh, you have a welcome Karen kind of a home page that gives you a quick summary of order history, wish list, loyalty, my profile, addresses, etc. And then each of these styles, which are configured using these style uh, modules defined here, have a link to the individual pages. So order history will take you to your order history page, and then order history page can navigate. You can navigate to order details. Uh, wish list can take you to your wish list page. And you'll see a list of modules that we also support uh, in account management to power each of these pages. And uh, the other section that I want to quickly touch base on was the HTML head modules. I think we talked about it during our demo uh, during the demo. So these are modules that are used in the HTML head of the page. Um, so there are different modules available here. So there are modules available for SEO optimization. Um, so that's the page summary, category page summary, product page summary, etc. Uh, so adding these modules to your HTML head ensures that they are, your uh, search engine is optimized, your pages are optimized for SEO. And then there are meta tags uh, module. Uh, one of the things you can do with this module is you can set like an icon for your uh, for your pages. Uh, then we have script injection modules um, such as inline script and external scripts. If you want any scripts to be injected in your page, you can go through your script injection, uh, use your script injection module for that purpose. So with that, uh, we are coming to the conclusion of all the different modules in the module library. Um, I'd like to pause here and see if there are any unanswered questions that um, Sam, you would like me to take at this point. Anu, we do not have any unanswered questions at the moment, so you can okay. keep going. OK, um, so that's the end of the demo. If there is um, anything else that people would like me to demo or showcase, I can certainly take some time, but if not, I hand this back to Evan. All righty, perfect, uh, Anu. Um, we would like to get your feedback on today's session. I've posted a link to a short survey in the Q&A panel. We value your feedback and welcome your input on how we did today and what you would like to see in future sessions. That survey scores on a scale from one to five with five being the highest score possible. And we thank you for your participation in that. As a reminder, the recording of today's session will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenter and a thank you to our audience for logging in and joining us today. Please stay safe and have a great rest of your day or evening wherever you are. Goodbye.